Hi, my name is Lena, and in this episode, I will show you two two ways to use audio effect rack to create some cool, uh, creative ways for mixing and live performance. So here we go. So watch this video. <laughs> Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. So, in my last week's video, I went through an audio effect rack for vocal mixing that I had created. So, in this week's video, I'm gonna show you how I did it. And also, the second tip is this kind of extra tip that you can use it for mixing and live performance. It's really funny, it's really fun. So, let's get into the tutorial and let's make some effect rack plugging. Uh, chains. The first way I want to show you how to make a one of these audio effect racks presets. I'm gonna go to the browser audio effects and I'm gonna go and find an audio effect rack. Put that on the track. There we go. That's the first step. Next step is I'm gonna align all the FX uh, dynamic uh, processors I want to put into the audio effect chain. And I'm gonna chain them. So I have gate, then I have EQ, compressor, separator, chorus, reverb, grain, delay. And the last one was utility. There we go, so that's the first step. So now because we added all these things here, you can see that when I click this button, this folder button here, it shows all these different plugins that we have put. So if this gate is first, the signal go first through the gate, then through the EQ, then through the compressor, saturator, and so on. So we work from left to right, yes. So the next button here shows all the chains. So we have the chain one here. So that I'm going to put just called wet. So that means that is the wet chain signal that has all the FX now. Then the third one here will show all the macros. So all the parameters, which we're going to make nice, colorful and nice and colorful and nice and colorful like that. So the first things first, I'm just gonna make this bit easier to look at. So I'm gonna double click on the top of the plugins here and make them small so we can look at them one by one. I'm gonna keep the browser window open because we're gonna be do doing some mapping. Let's get these macros looking nice and colorful. The first thing was a gate and I'm gonna put it into the macro one. So I'm gonna go to the macro one, uh, comment R and I'm gonna rename it to gate. Gate. I'm gonna also click it again and go and choose a color. Nice pink like that. Okay, next stage is that I need to now map the parameters that I want to control with the macro to the macro. So how we do that is that we click the map so everything turns green and this is why I kept the browser window open because it turns into macro mapping view. So it has a lot of purposes and that's one of them. So now I can go and choose which of the parameters which I like to put in gate. You can put one or as many as you like. I would like to put threshold. With the threshold, I can select the point in which the gate will cut everything under the threshold. So I'm gonna press threshold. And map it to gate. Now you can see when I move the macro here, the map parameter threshold is also moving in the plugin. I'm just gonna make that small again by double clicking it and we're gonna move into compressor. I just wanna show you quickly before compressor that between the gate and the compressor, I have an EQ. So the purpose of that, it's a vocal mixing. I want to just cut the low end off so that there's no any low end rumbling going on. Just cut the low end off, leave it there. And that's kind of like happening between the gate and the compressor, but I don't need to really have a macro for it. You can if you like though. Hey, in this point, please hit the subscription button, hit the bell icon. And yeah, because this channel is cool and we do cool things here, so you should come again. So uh, yeah, hit it. 
<laughs> let's get back to the tutorial now. So compressor needs a little bit more tweaking around than just one parameter. Let's rename it again. Comp and choose a color. There we go, and I am now gonna map it again, but I'm gonna map more things than just one. So ratio, map. Click threshold, map. Output, map. And on off button, map, yeah? So we have four different things that we are mapping this time. And now we need to go to this macro mapping view here on the left top corner. So the first one we see that it says compressor device on and we need to go between now, it goes between 64 and 127. So we need to just change that to one. So it goes between one and 127. And now we just select from these three, threshold ratio and output gain, the amounts that we would like it to go from. So example threshold, we want to maybe start with the zero decibels and go to minus 35 decibels, example. And then ratio, we could go from two to seven. When you're picking these, you want to just find what is the relative between the ratio and the threshold that you would like to use for this one. Do you want a lot of compression? So do you want, example, the uh, ratio to be much more bigger than the threshold and or other way around? So it just depends off your preference. And then we have a compression and output gain, and we could go from zero to minus four, example. So in this instance, I put one minus four, just because we have the auto makeup gain on. If we have the auto makeup gain off, then maybe I want I would like to add more gain instead of uh, reduce gain. So it just depends on your preferences. Again, how would you like to do it? Next one, we have the dry and wet. So that is self-explanatory. Just one click dry and wet, and we just go here. So it goes between 100 and zero. So that's exactly what we want. We just color it. And now because I didn't rename it before, it actually renamed it automatically as you could see, but I could just go and add comp on it. And the next one is a drive. So we go here and saturation. We do exactly the same thing. So with the drive, we also need to change the values of the parameter. If you would just like to add drive, then we can go and change it. Zero and plus 36. So now we go, we start from zero and then we can just add drive. So that's what I did here. Oh, did I add also something else there? Oh, the output as well. I wanted to parameter also the output so that we are again staging a little bit while we're doing it. Saturation, output, zero decibel to minus five example. It depends how much uh, gain reduction do would you like to add to that. Again, about the preference and the calculations you make. So every time now I'm adding decibels, I'm also reducing decibels. Okay, so the next one, chorus. And from there we go amount and rate, amount and rate. And that's straightforward again. You see I move the macro five and that moves Ba, 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 da, 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 da. Yay. Same thing, reverb and delay. And in here, I just wanna make sure that I have the exact right amounts again. So reverb decay time, eight, nine seconds. And maybe here we want a little bit less, so maybe 35%, 39%. So the next thing was also dry and wet. We do exactly the same. And then finally, we have utility that controls the gain. And because I want to reduce gain, not add gain, I go from between zero and minus 30 decibels. Gain, so zero, and then minus 30. And then let's just not forget the color. Color it in, otherwise it's not any good. How we can now save it is that we just go to this point here, click that, and you can see that it goes user library, presets, audio effects, audio effect racks, and now we can just rename it 
here like ha 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 and now that's there ha 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 this has appeared to the audio effects racks Ooh. and that was the first way of doing audio effect tracks Next, I will show another way, a little bit different than the one that we just created. So I'm gonna go and just create an audio effect rack again on an empty area. First things first, I'm gonna find a couple effects that I would like to add to this. Amp and echo together. Okay, and now I'm just gonna go to this area where it says chain and we're gonna create another chain. Right click, click here and create chain. So I'm gonna rename this one the dis distortion. And this one I'm gonna name high five. And for the uh, yellow one, I'm gonna find something else. Now flanger and the uh, course. So two different ones. So in this point, this is cool. We can actually cross them over, make a parameter so we can swap. So we go to chain, click that, and we see this kind of chain mapping situation here. I'm gonna just go here and line these blue lines up. So you see that there's two lines. There's this uh, light blue line and then there's a dark blue line. So I'm gonna go to this blue, light blue here on the left, on the top right, top row, and I'm just gonna pull that so that you can see that there's this side is light blue and that side is dark blue. And I'm gonna do the opposite to the lower one. Here we go, so we have that one light and that is light on the row. So now that means that we can map these together and we can swap between them. Okay, and how do we do this? We do it so that we can go to this area again, map, keep this area open, and we click this green area here and we click map. Now you see same chain selector has appeared. And what happens is that when I go and use the macro here, you see that there's this blue thingy that moves on the top of these rows. So example, high five is the dark blue. So we will hear that on the left now. She thought he was superficial and ended that way. Can we move? He loved her and he could hear anything that she says. And that's both of them same time. That's actually super cool. So what I could do is just automate that. I could. So I could just go like, automate it like this. And I'm just gonna make it go between each other. It just moves by itself. Yeah, so I think that's pretty cool. I hope you do as well. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Please come again. Hope you make awesome effect racks. And please let me know down in the comments if you have created effect racks and what are you using them for? Are you using for mixing, live performance? Share with the class, we all wanna know. Please subscribe, hit the bell icon and look at the social medias because there's a lot of cool stuff in the social medias and I will see you next week. Okay, every single Sunday. Every single Sunday. Okay, see you next week and have a nice day. Bye.